my opponent moves to e4. Queen e6 check. My opponent could take on d4, but the problem is queen takes e2. And now it's equal material, except my opponent's king is on the d4 square. That is not a sustainable position. He's, he, he's gonna get checkmated. This position that you see on the board right now, after e4, e6, the French defense, and b3, the Horwitz attack, Papa Ticulat Gambit, stupid name, but that's what it is. This is one of my favorite openings. And if you've watched other videos on the channel, you know this is one of my favorite openings. And you're like, Alex, stop constantly telling me to play this opening. I don't want to play it. It looks stupid. And it does look stupid. And you do kind of gambit a pawn. But just try it, please. Today's game is just another example of why I think you really should try it. And this game is absolutely mental. It's got a crazy ending that you're going to want to stick around for. And it's got a brilliant move in it. So when we get to that, I'm going to give you a chance to find it. So the gambit goes like this. d5, bishop b2, and pawn takes e4. And we go knight, f, knight to c3, attacking the pawn. And black can play f5 and say no you're not getting the pawn back and there is nothing you can do about it and black is correct except you can play d3 and gambit the pawn entirely for insane development and your opponent has weakened their king side by playing f5 most players know this though and therefore they'll play knight f6 instead to protect the pawn but after queen e2 there is only one way to continue defending the pawn, and that's queen d4. And you might be worried about the fact that the queen is stepping into the line of the bishop, but there's no good place for the knight to go to unleash this attack on the queen. Because if the knight moves to somewhere like b5, then b2 hangs. So the knight could go to a4 to protect the bishop, but then the queen just moves. And the knight no longer attacks e4 anymore. So queen d4 is a move to hold on to the pawn. But here you can gambit the pawn like after f5 with a tempo on the queen. Force the queen back. And for the cost of a pawn you have insane development. And me personally I would pick white in this position any day. Any day. Any, any time control. I'd play this in classical. In fact I have played this in classical. Not this exact line but the gambit itself with great success i might add so my opponent doesn't do that and he goes knight to c6 here i castle and knight d4 is a move to attack the queen and you can drop the queen back or you can go to e3 and it looks a bit passive but you're going to win this pawn back and you're going to launch moves like g4 g5 play Maybe bishop c4. Maybe once you win this pawn, bishop d3 to target h7. Your king is very, very safe on the queen side. a5 can pretty much always be met with a4. So it's quite a simple position to play for the white pieces. And you just want to attack your opponent's king side. Even if they castle queen side, you can still attack their king side. So bishop e7 is common, which is what my opponent plays. I take on e4. And my opponent castles. I can take here. But after bishop takes. I don't really want to trade my bishops off. I don't really want to give my fianchettoed bishop away. The computer says that I should do that. But uh, this is a very boring position. I want to retain my fianchettoed bishop. So I go knight f3 instead. We have takes takes. Bishop f6. Which is a mistake. Because I go d4, cutting off the contact first, because like I said, I want to keep my dark square bishop. And at any point, if this bishop ever moves, then I can go d5 potentially to unleash my bishop again onto g7. My opponent goes knight e7, which is a strange move. Because after bishop d3, threatening checkmate, my opponent sees it. Because 
you know, he's a good player. He's rated very highly. And goes g6 to cut off my connection. But here I have h4. I want to try to blast open my opponent's kingside. And if my opponent plays a move like h5, then I have g4 because my queen supports the g4 push. And if takes, queen takes, I mean, this is looking very scary. My knight could jump in. d5 is always on the cards to open up my bishop. I have rook d to g1. This is completely losing, even though material is equal, because my opponent's king is really weak and my pieces are so active. This is a very typical setup that you get in this opening. With the pawn on d4, bishop on d3, and bishop on b2, just staring down at your opponent's kingside. Sometimes this pawn is even left on the d2 square, especially if g4, g5 is played to control f6 to stop this bishop from challenging you. So that's something to bear in mind. But my opponent knows better than that. He goes bishop d7, and I go h5. Bishop c6 attacks my queen, and I go to e3. That is a bit inaccurate. g4 or f4 was better, to keep an eye on the knight that way. And also, f4 puts pressure on this bishop, and g4 keeps this pawn pinned. I think I was just a bit worried about my queen being a bit too stranded, so I just drop it back and maintain pressure on this diagonal. My opponent takes, and I could take with the queen, but I thought taking with the g4, with um, the g-pawn was better, because my queen still threatens to come into h6 if I can take. But the problem is, my opponent has knight to f5, and I really have nothing better than to take the knight. And after e takes, I realize that I don't actually have any threats. If I go queen to h6, then I lose a queen. So that's not an option. I need to keep my queen on e3, so f4 is always playable in the case of bishop g5. And when I take, after f takes, again, queen h6 doesn't work because of the check. But even if the check didn't exist, let's just imagine bishop g5 wasn't a thing. Let's say we have this position. Then rook f7 just guards the h7 pawn, and I have no attack. So after f takes g6, there is only one move here. And, th and this is where the fun really starts. This, this is where it gets exciting. There's only one move for white to retain the advantage. Every other move gives the advantage to black. So it's not obvious. It's not obviously winning or anything. So I'd encourage you to try and find it. The move is queen e6 check. And you might be wondering what's so special about that. Well, the thing is, black has three moves to counter it. He can go rook f7. He can go king g7. Or he can go king to h8. Now, king g7 and king h8 both put the king in line with my bishop. And my queen is just putting a bit of pressure on the position in general. Rook f7 allows rook takes h7. And if you take, then I take on f7 with check and you're just getting mated. So you can't take, you'd have to try and defend your rook. And then... I can even just trade everything off and be a pawn up and try and grind down this end game. So my opponent went king to g7. And like I said, it's lined up with the bishop, but there's two pieces in the way. So what am I going to do? There's no rook takes h7 because there's nothing to take because the rook didn't move to block. And here I find a move I was really, really happy with. I went bishop to a3. Now, the computer doesn't like it that much, because the computer knows what I'm trying to do, and it's going to try and stop it. Here, my opponent needs to find rook to h8, putting the rook in the corner to defend h7, which is just an odd move. Like, once, once you look at it, you're like, okay, yeah, white doesn't actually have any threats, that makes a lot of sense. But it does look ugly. 
you know, putting the rook in the corner, if I can check the king and force it to the back rank, the rook is essentially out of the game. So realistically, the most natural move to play here is rook e8 to attack the queen, right? And if the queen retreats, black is a very nice position. can double up on the d-file, put pressure on the d4 pawn. Clear my bishop is misplaced because it should be defending the pawn. But here, here is where the game gets good. And I'm sure many of you have seen the move at this point. And if you haven't seen the move, there is one move which is completely winning for white. And it's rook takes h7 check. And you're like, okay, you played this in a previous variation where the rook was on f7 so that you could take it after king takes rook. And by the way, you have to take the rook because every other square that the king wants to go to is covered. So you have to take. Yeah, you have queen f7 anyway. Now you can't play rook to h1 because then king back to g7 and you have no entry point. It's essentially the, exactly the same position as before we sacrificed the rook, except you're a rook down. So queen f7 is the move. And if the king goes back to h8, then rook h1 check. The king has no moves, so the bishop has to block. And the computer wants ideas like d5 and bringing the bishop back. But this is miserable to play. I mean, you can just go bishop b2 straight away. You can give a spite check, but the computer just wants to start sacrificing pieces. There is nothing that black can do if he puts the king back on h8, because the queen is tied down to the defense of the bishop. So you take away both of your pieces that operate on the dark diagonals. So you can't stop d5 with this. You can attack the queen, but d5 queen f6 and it's mate so my opponent after queen f7 check finds king to h6 and i consider this to be the beginning of the checkmating sequence the computer doesn't say that it's mate in eight moves but the only way that it isn't checkmate is if he gives up a bunch of material and the move here is rook h1 check. And I don't play this. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't play it. Rook h1 check is the move. I didn't see what I was supposed to do after bishop to h4. Because the king isn't on h8, so I don't have this. But the winning move here is king b1, which I did see to set up the bishop check. But... I couldn't understand what I was supposed to do after g5. And the computer wants me to sacrifice the second rook to go bishop c1. And here, my opponent has nothing better than to give up the queen. And he's not even getting a bishop for it because I have queen f6 check. The queen can't take because it's pinned. And after the retreat, I just win the queen and... If I was giving away the bishop for the queen, like this, maybe black has chances because he has two rooks for a queen. But after queen f6 check, it's it's over. I've got too much material and the king is far too weak. I didn't see this after the move g5. I didn't notice that I had rook takes h4 check or bishop c1 with exactly the same idea. Instead... I went f4. f4 makes the position a draw. And there is only one move for black to maintain a draw. And it's bishop to h4. And I saw this move. I thought I had rook to h1. And I had way too much pressure on my opponent. The reason I go f4 is to cut the king's escape off g5 because that's what i was worried about and i am down a rook bear in mind and i thought i had enough pressure here i could maybe try to 
play something like d5 and relocate my bishop to f6. But I actually don't have enough time. The computer just wants a5. And after king b1, rook a6. Which, I mean, that's, that's an insane move to find. Because I also do have ideas of this. But it's a crazy position. Look how weak his king is. Computer wants the king to go to h5 to march into my territory. Like, chill. No one's finding that. After f4, my opponent goes rook e2. And I saw this move and I was like, that can't be right. You, you can't be trying to invade me right now. Like, that's not a thing. So I go rook h1, which isn't the best move. But it's forcing, because my opponent only has one move. His king can't move anywhere, so bishop h4 is the only move. And then I calculated bishop to f8 check. And you can't take it, because this is mate. The queen's overloaded. So bishop f8 checks the king, and only one move, king h5. Here, again, there is only one move for white. And it's kind of obvious, queen h7 check, forcing the king to g4. Again, only one move for white, queen takes g6 check. And the king has a few options. Well, he can take on f4, or he can go to f3. He chooses to take on f4. Bishop h6 check, again. The only win... well, here the position is quite winning for white because I mean look the king is literally on f4 but this is the easiest way to go about it and the computer wants to give the bishop up but there are ideas of rook h4 check I can't take because he's going to trade but I did see rook h4 check here and the king runs out of squares really the bishop takes on g5 and the king's just going to get mated you like the queen's under attack Queen to h5 is coming, rook to f4 is coming. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing to do. So, my opponent moves to e4. Queen e6 check. My opponent could take on d4, which actually gives him a bit more of a chance to survive. But the problem is queen takes e2. And now it's equal material, except my opponent's king is on the d4 square. That is not a sustainable position. He's he, he's going to get checkmated and there's no pressure on me anymore because we're equal on material. And I'm very low on time at this point. So my opponent tries to hang on with king to f3, protecting the rook. And here, there is one move. There is one move for white. And it is kind of obvious. It's queen takes f5 check. And the king is completely cut off by all of the pieces, unless he goes to g2. And here I actually kind of panic, because you can see I've got 12 seconds left. And for some reason, I could not find the move. I was like, how do I check this king? Because if I play something like queen g4, my, opponent, my opponent's king ends up on the h1 square. And I run out of firepower. I can take the rook. But my opponent's okay. Somehow he's not getting mated here. So I then eventually realize, oh, there's just queen h3 check. And I had one second on the clock. You can see I've got three seconds there. That's because I get a two second bonus increment after every move. So I played queen h3 check with one second on the clock. I don't know why I didn't see it quicker, because it's kind of obvious. It's literally mate in two, but but I didn't notice um, until the last second. And here, king takes f2, rook f1 is mate. Classic triangle sort of setup from the rook and the queen. This is mate in so many different scenarios, because the only place the king can go is e2, but the rook takes up that square. So that's the game. And I hope it might have inspired you to give this opening a go. There's a bunch of other videos on my channel in this gambit in particular because I love it so much and I couldn't recommend it enough. So, yeah.
please give, give, give it a go if you like the look of games like this. I can't guarantee every game is going to be quite as wild as this or quite as winning as this. But some of them might be. You're going to catch your opponent off guard at the very least. And real quick, the channel, as of the time of recording, is very close to 500 subscribers, which, by the way, is insane. And thank you so much to anyone who has subscribed. And if you've gotten this far in the video, I would like to think you've found this video at the very least educational, if not somewhat entertaining as well. So please drop a like and subscribe to try and help me get to that goal. If if you want to see more videos like this, of course, if you don't don't want to see more videos like this, why did you watch till the end? It's a bit weird. Maybe you just left your computer playing by accident. You chucked your phone to decide why you were making food and it auto played this video or something. I don't know, but um, I'll, I'll shut up now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.